Hello guys, hello guys, hello guys, and welcome to another one of my Fortnite walkthrough videos playing on my newbie camp pants account, my low powered account where I am walking through the entire game and we are about to complete our very first category 2 storm. I have taken in Tank Penny and as you can see I still don't really have any good weapon options for her, but the thing that we're going to be looking into here is not as much weapons as it is a category 2 storm. It is the same thing as completing your normal Atlas missions, you just have not just one but two Atlases to protect at the same time. We have the exact same duration of the defense, we have like the same type of monsters coming towards us, but we have a much larger area that we need to actually defend, and that is what really makes these double, triple, quadruple atlas missions really really interesting because you may need to make some really creative base designs. But this time around here for the very first double atlas mission I was super lucky having them very close to each other. In this video here I'm going to try to make a new base for the first time or rather I did. Of course I made my standard pyramid because I really like it for so many reasons mainly smashers and simplicity but Cybercircle commented on one of my videos, on a lot of my videos, thank you very much for that, you are so insightful, really cool stuff, but on a new ways for, way for me to protect the atlas, this stuff here, just using four slants or inverted stairs, it is something I have never done before and when I read the comment I was mind blown about the simplicity, the compactness of making a base defense like that, so I haven't done it before this video here this is the first time that i'm testing out an atlas defense that is so compact where the only thing you really need is to have four of these inverted slants or stairs of course a roof and according to cyber server's comment you can actually pop down the base on top there and have it extend over the entire defense i am amazed i absolutely love when we have options to make things in the game and you just You've been doing it in one way that you feel is really good and suddenly somebody shares something with you that is mind-blowing, amazing in its simplicity and this base design really is that. So hopefully in this video here we're going to be able to see that the husks actually go for the stairs, these inverted slants, inverted stairs, instead of going through the holes in the corners because they actually can't do that. So they are going to be targeting these four structures instead of going directly towards the atlas and you can even put up ceilings after these slants or stairs to make traps on the other side of them so the most compact atlas defense i have ever made and i am super hyped about doing that and sharing it with you guys so kudos to cyber server for sharing that i am so happy that you put down that comment what i'm doing here is to make of course a tiny bit of a welcome for the husks towards the main atlas the way that i look at the map is to see that okay i have these cloud tentacle areas here so this is where the husks are going to be coming so i'm going to make sure that they take damage along the way towards the atlas so that hopefully the game is going to have some kind of automated husk slaying and that very few of them are going to actually make it towards or to the actual atlas so that i can casually defended and you can always look on your map to see where these tentacles are to get a bit of an idea about where they spawn my favorite thing to do is actually to put roofs over the actual spawn area and make sure they just never leave that area but given that this is a very new account and i have very few resources and very bad traps i kind of need to be a little bit more creative and strategic about where i place them and how I want to nudge the husks towards those areas. So I'm just taking out some time to build that part of the defense, even though it is far from the atlas, and you could say that it might be more efficient to have the traps closer to the base, where I know the husks are all going to be coming. I do like having things away from the atlas. Also, in case I see a sploder or something else go crazy, then it is not going to actually take down my actual base. I'm going to have the chaotic destruction kind of thing happening further away from the objective that I'm trying to defend. So that is like the main thought about it. So I have my almost kill tunnel area towards the main atlas where I can see the husks are going to be spawning. And then I just have the other atlas super casually undefended pretty much just with walls in case we have 
a flinger or something that is going to be shooting husks over there or for some reason they're going to be selecting a secondary path and they're like hmm this atlas looks yummy I'm gonna go there instead so I'm just activating the atlas getting prepared for the first double swirl the double atlas defense it is something that normally I don't consider these missions that tough because in the end game it is often three or four of them and some of it in, in the air really crazy stuff but for me this was a bit more challenging than, than what I was prepared for because I wasn't prepared for this. The storm is changing directions. It is something I'm used to seeing on my main account, but I was not prepared for the storm to change directions in Plankerton. It has been such a long time since I played in Plankerton that I didn't really think the storm could change directions here. And what it means, if you are unfamiliar with it, is that the spawn is going to move. So instead of having the spawn where I prepared for it, with all the traps, with all the welcome partying gas traps and wall dots, now yeah, the husks just decided to appear in another direction, which means that my now completely undefended atlas here is the new target, has the new spawn close to it. So I just had to put up whatever I had, and here you can really see how these slants can be used you can put up a ceiling and just place down a trap there as well so that if things actually reach this area they're gonna get zapped of course this is a ceiling sapper it is one of my least favorite traps in that it is one target only but it was what i had to work with so this was so crazy but at the same time really really fun and the most important thing i feel is that we can see how effective these inverted stairs really are this defense holds max completely amazing compact defense for an atlas just putting in full stairs or inverted slant then you have it protected of course a roof or ceiling or whatever you want to be going with i am so amazed to have tried out that that it has been shared with me and to be able to confirm this is amazing compact simple easy low resource easy to defend of course it doesn't have the advantage that the pyramid has in regards to smashers charging over it but besides that it is probably the most brilliant defense i have ever seen in the game so thank you once again very much for sharing that and that was of course completing the very first double atlas in the game here with tank penny yeah we did take some damage but another really like wow you guys need to remember this if you're playing on planket and you're just getting started the storm can now change directions, so you cannot any longer be sure that where you have the spawning tentacles at the very start of the game is where they're going to be throughout the battle, which means that you need to consider a larger part of the environment when you make your defenses. So hopefully throughout the rest of my Plankerton videos it is something I'm going to be keeping a little bit of focus on when I'm playing defense styled maps. but. I have to admit, moving into Plankerton opens up for a larger palette of being able to play radar missions, encampment missions, rescue the survivors missions, and I am so much more hyped about doing those for my casual progression. So we're probably going to be doing a great deal of those, or I am anyway, but we're going to see that as we reach it. Here are, of course, the rewards. Getting pure drops of rain, absolutely amazing, and other things are two swirls completed, double impressed and double troubled, that's exactly how it should be. <laughs> this was a really amazing mission for me to have completed in Plankerton because it is like reaching Plankerton is a bit of a milestone in that you get the new second tier evolution skill tree in the game. But the thing that really one-ups it is when you start getting rare hero rewards, when you start having two atlases, when you start getting 10 of these evolution materials, pure drops of rain, we're gonna be getting lightning in a bottle as well in Plankerton. So we are like really one-upping things in terms of what we're getting. Also, you can see the amounts for the missions are completely different here, a rare melee weapon schematic as well. Hopefully it's going to be something I can use for Tank Penny. I don't know yet, but like it would be nice to get a crowbar, even if it's a rare one. So, But here we have the skill tree, and of course we did earn two skill points. So what do I want to do? Well, we have traps, we have melee weapons, we have ranged weapons, and I need this because I want to upgrade and evolve my dragon's roll so that it can be even more powerful 
And doing that means that it is going to cost silver instead of copper to craft. This is super important, guys. Don't upgrade your weapon before you have the next material steadily coming. If you're not getting silver all the time, don't upgrade to a two-star weapon. If you're not getting malachite all the time, don't upgrade to a three-star weapon and so forth because you will be unable to make your weapon if you do that. So that was pretty much what I had to share in this video here. Two swirls completed, evolved our dragon's roll. Of course, leveling up here to like give it a bit of a punch. The evolution in itself gives it an additional punch, really. But leveling it up further is, of course, a good thing. And the quests at hand moving forward next time is going to be no robots, no doctors. As always, guys, thank you very much and very much for watching.